it's good. Um, I mean, it's always good to to get back with the boys. Um, it's something I I look forward to, especially now that I'm away from home. So it's a uh, it's a bit more special, I think, for me when I meet up with the guys. And what sort of things do you do? You obviously in international duty. You know, you obviously traveling a bit, and you're obviously you're training, preparing for games. Well, what's that like? Um, I mean, there's a lot of waiting around in the hotel room. There's not a lot to do. There's not a lot, a lot we can do. But like I said, it's something now that I, I look forward to, even though it's just lying around with the guys or watching films or playing FIFA and stuff like that. And the training itself, um, it's more tactical preparation for the games because the physical stuff we we do with the clubs or we're expected to do with the clubs. So we turn up just uh, fully focused for for the opposing team. And the international duty of late, it's 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 changed from the two game format to the three games you are playing this this time around. Uh, obviously, one game's been passed so far, and and when the Glentorn supporters are listening to this, these will be mid match against Montenegro. But the game against Norway, um, you, you've obviously had a, a had a great report, um, pulled off a great few saves in the match. What was that like? You know, going to playing against Norway and up against players like Erling Haaland. Um, I think it, it's something that you you kind of want to do. You always want to play against the best. Um, the rumours that he might not uh, play or travel with the team for the COVID restrictions, but we always want to play the best, the best players, the best teams. And like you said, yeah, I had a good match. Um, I always knew I could I could obviously do it. I just needed to to be given the chance to showcase myself. So when I got to do that the other day. And then, obviously, for the likes of Gibraltar, when you're playing them sort of nations that that have the, the big powerhouses in it, you're you're obviously being a goalkeeper expected to to have a busy sort of evening or afternoon. What's what's the mindset like for you in terms of a goalkeeper? Just to make make as many saves as possible, try and help uh, help out my team as much as I can, um, and at the end of the day, try and keep the the scoreline as tight as possible and let the outfielders do their job to try and score us a goal. And obviously for a country like Gibraltar, there's been improvements uh, in the international stage, obviously with the Nation League, who's playing against sort of teams at a similar level as yourselves, which means there's obviously more of a chance of you getting getting something from it. What's what's the difference like in the preparation when you go from the national Nations League to sort of World Cup qualifiers and playing the Hollands, the Germanys? And teams like that? Um, there's not a lot of difference. I think maybe there's a bit more of an emphasis on our defensive shape, but the preparation is always the same. We do we would do the same kind of drills. Um, not, there's no drastic change. Maybe we, we would kind of, without the ball, practice our shape and just move as a, as a block, preparing for the bigger nations. But, but like I said, it's it's more or less the same kind of training. We don't we don't treat any other team. We don't treat any teams differently from from one another which I think is, is, is a good thing. And going back to sort of that Norway game, uh, there's not many goalkeepers, and I think I've seen a stat online that there's only been a few goalkeepers this year that actually haven't conceded to to, to Holland. Uh, your name is now on that list. That must be <laughs> great, you know, as a personal achievement. I'm sure, I'm sure your friends are have, have a bit of slagging with you in terms of, of that, but I'm sure deep down yeah. it really is an achievement to, to not concede to somebody that's been so prolific for sort of the past 18 months oh yeah definitely it was a it's a big moment for me big achievement but um yeah i saw stuff of saying like rest in peace gibraltar Helen's going to score nine goals all this kind of stuff but that kind of stuff just kind of motivates me for for the occasion um and yeah he he didn't score that match which which is something uh that's, that's good for me so i'm happy with that and I'm not sure if, if you actually knew, but maybe Reese or, or Keelan have, have mentioned to you, but they actually, they played against Haaland uh, when he was over playing for Molde in the Europa League. Did, were you aware of that? I spoke to Marin a few times and he, he said himself he had uh, Haaland in his back pocket the whole game. Keelan so, Marin having yeah. Erling Haaland in his back pocket, that's <laughs> something you don't hear. If he... <laughs> his words, uh, his words, not mine. Uh, yeah, we, had a, we had a laugh about it, we had a laugh about it. And then obviously the international duty, like you've obviously got upcoming games against Montenegro and, and Holland. What's what's the the camp like going into them sort of games? I think everyone's pretty determined. Um we it's quite it's quite hard with the three games, having a, the three games in such a short amount of time. 
but we're preparing as best as we can and um, everyone's always determined it's not like we go in with nerves or or scared playing against the big nations so everyone prepares very well even if uh, players have to kind of replace each other and there's a, there's, there's, a, there's a lot of respect for for the players there's no kind of rivalry or anything like that so it's there's always good um, atmosphere within the, the national team which which is what I like to see Another country like Gibraltar, you know, you're obviously playing in, in Northern Ireland. Um, a lot of games at the moment with uh, the Tuesday, Saturday. That's a bit like the international stage where you don't get much time to actually train. You're just training for the next game and sort of the preparation. So you've had a bit of you've had a bit of practice in, in terms of your preparation, just going from game to game. What's it like with the other Gibraltans? Is there have they been playing many games? Is their season going or? Well, yeah, I think uh, playing twice a week back in back in Belfast is a, is a blessing in disguise because um, as much as I complained I was really tired with, uh, with all the games um, it's kind of made me a bit accustomed to, to these three three games now so and I think the minutes I have played this season compared to the, the other players the Gibraltarians in the squad I have a bit more I think the, the league stopped for for two weeks or so back in Gibraltar due to COVID so um they're outside legs, but again, we've got we've got a big squad to fill in the spaces. And then the Gibraltar players, you suppose you're flying the flag for for Glentorn and, and Gibraltar, and you're you're sort of branching the Glentorn family and the Glentorn network out there. Is as the, any of the Gibraltars sort of been keeping tabs of how Glentorn have been doing and keeping tabs of your performances for the Glens? Yeah, definitely. I have a lot of people back home that, um, that support me, and I'm now Glentorn supporters. I bought uh, on their behalf. I bought a lot of the uh, kits and Glentoran merchandise in the shop, so you'll be seeing quite a few people in Gibraltar walking around Glentoran tops. So there's definitely more fans now, Glentoran fans in Gibraltar. Um, my supporters, my family, and stuff, which which I really appreciate, and uh, I hope it's, it works the other way as well. I'm making everyone back in East Belfast proud, playing for the national team. And what about then for your Gibraltar teammates uh, on on the international? Team, is there any of them that they could, could come over and play in, in Belfast? Are you maybe reaching out to Wendy and Mick saying, you know what, get get him signed, or are you the you the scout for for Gibraltar for us? Well, yeah, they, uh, the coaching staff sometimes ask me what I think of this player and stuff. So, and I always give them my my opinion, but my opinion is to bring as many many of them as possible. So I'm not by myself over there. So let's say no, let's put, I'm going to put you on the spot. Let's say you're the manager okay. of Glen Torn and you've got one one Gibraltar teammate to bring across. Which Gibraltar teammate are you bringing? You bringing over to the Glens? I would bring either Ethan Jolly or TJ Deba. And and what's the reason behind bringing bringing them to? Tell us a bit uh, about them. Um, Ethan, I would say, was the closest person I was with back in back in Europe, and even when I'm here with the national team. He's just a, a good laugh as well as obviously a good football player, very good right back, very versatile. He can play right back, left back, sense the defensive mid. And TJ is just the, the starlet of the national team as well as his club, Lincoln Redemps. He's a small powerhouse. He's fast, he's strong, very good finisher, very good uh, feet running with the ball. And he he will definitely go place there. I know that for a fact. So any of those two would be a great signing. That's, that's great to hear. And life at Glen Torn, it's been a bit difficult for you. Uh, there's been no real supporters in games that the mass numbers that, that our fan base has. And uh, you, ca- you haven't really been able to do much in terms of socialising just due with the, the COVID restrictions. And what's what's it been like for you, obviously, living living here over in Northern Ireland and not re- being able to do much? So what's what's the downtime like? Um, the downtime... It's it's been different because I've had phases where I've been by myself for a number of weeks. Then I have a few other players from the team living with me in the house. But recently it's been really good. I have Kieran O'Connor living with me and um, he's very good company. I mean, I think we're both very good influence to each other. Um, and it's just it's just good fun. You know, we have our, our movie nights and stuff. <laughs> I cook for him, he cleans, that's the rule. And um, I definitely couldn't ask for a better roommate with, with Kieran. And it's, it's going well. So he, he's definitely kept me sane in that house, especially during these tough times of COVID and the lockdowns and all that kind of stuff. And what's what's your go-to dish then that, that Kieran O'Connor asks for all the time? He, he's a bit picky. Huh? He, he complains about a lot. I think I consider myself a good cook, but 
if he finds a, a reason to complain, he will complain. But um, I don't know. We we do mix it up a bit. But before a match, I'll always go for the, the standard spag bow, a bit of pasta before a match. Oh, so we'll we'll do our Sunday roast as well. So, so is that is that you? Better come down with me with with steel calling. Uh, is that you inviting maybe a few boys to come down and and, and taste a Sunday roast maybe? I can make enough. I'll make enough for everyone to come down. No, oh, that, that that's great to hear. So so in terms of your performances this season, you're leading the way in terms of clean sheets in the Northern Ireland Football League, which is great. Um, how have you assessed how the seasons went? Because you've 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 came from strength to strength since you've arrived. Really, you've had your ups, you your downs, but that's. Part and parcel as a goalkeeper. No, oh, yeah, definitely. There's no secret that I've had my ups and downs. Um, it's I'd be lying if I said it's been it's been easy. Um, the league is 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 hard to adapt to. It's very different to any other league around the world. It's very physical, but that can be a good thing. But um, I think I see myself slowly adapting to the league. And like you said, I have the most clean sheets. But that also comes with the help of my defenders and the rest of the team. That's just that's not just myself that's achieved that. But overall, I think I'm, I'm having a good season. Could always do better. I, I keep high standards for myself, and just I just keep on look, looking to improve for myself personally and for the team. And your your goalkeeper, the goalkeepers union, it obviously is a thing. And Glenn Torn, Elliot is sort of at the helm of it, and he he leads the way. Um, what's it been like working with Elliot? Uh, it's obviously he's new into the, sort of the coaching, but he's he's been experienced as a player. No, yeah, definitely. It's it's great working with Elliot, working with him in London. And um, he he teaches me a lot of things. He's a he's a good coach, even though he like you said, he's an experienced inexperienced coach, but he, he's a natural with that. Um he supports me through through the good and bad. So it's good having someone like him um coaching me, I think, uh, at Glen Time. And is the I know coaches can sort of vary um all around the world. Is Elliot's coaching different to what you've maybe received back home in Gibraltar and what way has it been yeah, different? Right. I, suppose? I, I would say it's, it's very different, the coaching, the goalkeeper, the goalkeeper coaching um, back in the nine compared to, to Jib or the Spanish um, goalkeeper coaches I've had. I always tell Elliot that. I always tell the, the national team keeper coach here that it's not a bad thing. It's just good to kind of ha- have two types of um, coaching that you're surrounded by. Elliot is more uh, volley-based, um, which, is, which is good for kind of control, a lot of control. Whereas uh, here it's more uh, footwork and a longer kind of sequence until the end and um, finish, if you, if you know what I mean. But like I said, it's good to have both. So it's, you have to adapt to both kind of situations and, and drills. And then for the sort of the end of the season, do you, do you have any sort of targets or how you want to see the season out? And obviously the team has, has got better and better as the seasons went on, which was always going to be the case, given the, the volume of players that came in and taking time for them to settle. Uh, so do you see us finishing sort of the season season strong? Obviously, we have the Irish Cup as well that we want to hold, keep it the oval. Oh, yeah. No, yeah, definitely. I think uh, a lot of fans expected us in the beginning of the season just because we had a very good team on paper that we would just click, which um, is very rarely the case. Um, it was always going to take time with all the, the new signings, but once we started kind of getting used to each other, the, the team started clicking and we started uh, moving up the, the, t- the ladder, the table. And for the team itself, I think we should just take it game by game, not uh, not think too far ahead. Uh, just play each game like it's a final and the, the points on the table will, will work for itself and hopefully we'll finish at the very top. Mm-hmm.